Every small business owner on the internet these days knows that social media presence is a huge component for success. Basically, you need to be on the web and you need to get your products seen. For me, my primary platform is currently Instagram, where I've got two accounts. One is my art account, Ray Strikes Back, and one is my account for the pins that I make, Rachel Ross Fantasy Pins. I like using this folding light box because it's nice and bright, and especially for pins, it really lights up all of the metal and the details. But photographing pins is tricky because they're so reflective. So I tend to move around a lot, and all of that is just because I'm trying to get the reflections in the photos just right. I like using a lot of different backgrounds and props in my setups. The clutter is honestly for my own benefit. I used to photograph all my pins against just a plain white background, and it looked fine but I got really sick of shooting those same old photos every time I got a new pin in. So I introduced more visual variety to make it more interesting for myself. A lot of people just use their phones to photograph their pins and that can look great, but I personally prefer to use a DSLR because the depth of field is much more authentic and cinematic. I love my phone's camera. I've, I've got a Pixel 6 Pro, which is actually what I shot this video on while I was using my DSLR, but there's something about a traditional camera that just looks and feels so magical. My DSLR, I actually got used off of some local classified ads for 150 bucks. So believe it or not, you can actually get a pretty good camera for a steal of a price, and there's no reason not to look at used. My last two DSLR cameras have both been used, and I've never had an issue with them. On top of all of my illustration that I do, I also design fantasy pins. Essentially, those are just super fancy fandom pins that tend to be limited edition collector items. They're very large, very complicated. So today, I actually, one of the projects that I needed to get to was photographing one of the pins that has arrived from the factory that has been shipped to me that I need to get ready to go out to pre-sale buyers. I usually like to photograph it very first thing so that I can put up a post on my Instagram and my Discord to let them know, hey, this pin has arrived. So I do that first because then it takes a day or two to grade all of the pins depending on the size of the batch and the complexity of the pin and especially the flaw rate. While I'm doing that, that gives the pre-sale buyers all of that time to submit their address changes. When I've got a lot of prints or stickers that I'm going to be fulfilling, I actually have a spreadsheet to keep track of what I need to print. I'll go through all of my orders across my shops, list out the products in the spreadsheet, and then I color code everything by size and product type, as well as whether or not I've printed it yet. It seems like a really simple system, but having a list of everything just in one place helps a lot. I print everything grouped by product type and then paper size. While my 5x7s are printing, I'll usually grab the backing boards and the clear sleeves and get them all laid out so that I can just quickly get them signed once they're printed.
Once the 5x7s are ready to go, I move on to the 8x10s and so on until I've got all the prints that I need. Sizes larger than 8x10 have to get rolled up and shipped in a tube, so I forgo backing boards for those prints. After I've got all the prints finished, I move on to stickers. Currently I'm only making my own stickers for my Etsy shop, Forlorn Fables, and all of the vinyl stickers on my website are professionally printed. Moving forward though, I'd like to start producing more of my own stickers on my website because professional companies always have a massive minimum order quantity, so I'll be able to get more variety in my designs by just printing them as they're sold. I've actually only had stickers listed on Etsy for about a month, but they're already some of my best selling products and I'm so excited about it. I'll definitely be looking to add more designs to the shop in the future. For fantasy pins, the packaging is a big part of the presentation. The factories usually ship more expensive pins in little individual bubble wrapped baggies, so to cut back on waste, I'll leave the pins in that original packaging. For the simpler open edition pins that I sell, I just card them and ship them in a bubble mailer. I used to stamp each individual necklace box with this gold ink stamp and the logo for that particular series of pins, but it was a really difficult and time consuming process and my stamp for the poker cards actually broke. Eventually I would love to get boxes that are properly hot stamped with gold foil, but there's always a large minimum order quantity because they have to make a special plate. So I've been really reluctant to order like a thousand boxes for a series when I'm not sure that I'll need that many. I should just design a logo for myself that I can use in lieu of the series specific logos, but I'm indecisive and can't commit to a design. So there you go. So I am finished packing orders for the day, probably for the week. It was actually a little bit bigger process than I anticipated because it involved all of my different products. It wasn't that I had a lot of orders, it was just that I had some really big orders, which I am so grateful for. Big orders help me out so much. But I did have to uh, split them up according to product type, so hi, bye. I never mix shipments of fantasy pins and prints because they're premium, more expensive items. I ship them in very protective, like a box with cotton padding, inside another box surrounded by crinkle paper. They're very sturdy. I have never had one of those packages damaged in any sort of way. And the prints are A, too big for those boxes, but also I've found that they are most secure in just a very rigid flat mailer with lots of backing so that they're nice and stiff and they don't get bent in transit. So that's it for today. I don't think I'm going to be filming anymore this week, so I'm going to go ahead and say that's it for this studio vlog. Thanks for joining me. It was a busy day, but um, I hope you found it interesting. It's kind of fun being able to share what my a daily workload kind of looks like.